Animal welfare groups have decried panic-driven stampedes in these chambers, citing footage of anxious geese flapping frantically and crowding one another in fear. Critics argue that the very design meant to humanely end lives instead sparks chaos, as birds thrash and collide in tight quarters, risking broken feathers and injured limbs during what should be a swift process. At the same time, Canada geese boast extraordinary breath-holding feats that may undermine chamber effectiveness. These birds can dive and stay submerged for up to five minutes thanks to specialized muscles that divert oxygen to vital organs. When CO2 levels rise slowly, geese may simply hold their breath, delaying unconsciousness and prolonging distress. The American Veterinary Medical Association offers detailed guidelines for avian euthanasia by gas recommending gradual concentration increases to reduce panic. Yet these protocols were developed for smaller poultry like chickens and turkeys. Waterfowl physiology differs markedly, and veterinarians caution that without peer-reviewed trials specific to Canada geese, managers are navigating a field of uncertainty rather than clear assurance. Here's the twist. Survival traits that make geese masters of lakeside living can turn carbon dioxide from a quick fix into a prolonged ordeal. Rather than a clean, instantaneous end, birds may experience minutes of mounting confusion as oxygen gives way to rising carbon dioxide, gasping in a sealed cage that looks more like a punishment than a humane solution. What seemed like a humane last resort may in fact extend suffering and spark legal challenges over inhumane treatment. Critics point out that panic-induced injuries and prolonged distress could violate state animal welfare statutes, turning a pilot program into a public relations nightmare. The payoff is a sobering realization. The method chosen to address growing public health risks, from E. coli beach closures to avian influenza concerns, may contradict the compassion at the heart of wildlife management. For those who believe humane treatment must guide policy, these gas chambers raise more questions than they answer. Each nest spawns five to seven goslings, destroy eggs to halt hundreds more. Before a single gosling hatches, Michigan's Department of Natural Resources moves in to stop nests. Each spring, DNR crews walk shorelines and locate Canada goose nests, hidden in grass and reeds. Technicians document nest locations and log GPS coordinates to track treatment results. The plan is to remove or oil eggs before embryos develop. This early step aims to curb population growth at the source and save taxpayer money on expensive cleanup and relocation. By focusing on eggs, managers hope to avoid larger-scale culling and high-cost methods later. Local volunteers from the Nest Watch program also help monitor site activity and ensure no nests are missed. You'll soon see why leaving nests alone can flood parks, close beaches, and overwhelm cleanup crews. One barren nest now can save hundreds of future headaches. The simple act of interrupting one life cycle may protect our parks, lakes, and neighborhoods in the months ahead. For city residents who use these spaces daily, it can mean the difference between a clean picnic and a muddy minefield.